Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. This week we bring you all new commanders from the Brothers War set. Val put together a Tarnos Solemn Survivor deck aimed at milling himself completely to reanimate a Thassa's Oracle and win only through activating abilities. Yo is playing a mid-rangey Urza Lord Protector, aiming to draw their whole library through Sensei's top loops and finishing with Nexus of Fate or Blind Obedience. Elder built a young Mishra, Tamer of Makfawa, aimed at unearthing Mola Citadel and therefore being able to go off through less mana. And finally, Rodrigue is on the old Mishra, Eminent One, also aimed at turboing Bola Citadel and winning through top and reservoir. Bal is going first and will gun once, finding a Watery Grave, Vault of Champions and a Sea of Clouds for lands. Talesman of Dominance for ramp and a turn 1 Esper Sentinel can help with some card advantage. That, as well as Archivist of Ogma. Lurus is not only recursion as well as used for intuition piles. Diogo kept his first 7 with a single island but with a Mana Vault and Talesman of Progress for ramp, which can also allow for a turn 1 Esper Sentinel. With Urza's cost reduction, the deck is packing several silence effects, like Calamity's Wake. Reshape can help find Sensei Divine in top or a future sight effect, like Reality Ship or Mystic Forge. Dress Down is great interaction for Thoracles or other similar effects. Elder Mulligan once and didn't want to go lower, having found an Ancient Tomb, Crystal Vein, a Mountain and an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth for lands. Vector Signet can help ramp into an Imperial Recruiter to find a Dockside, as he is going third in turn order versus two artifact-oriented decks. Worst case scenario, Wheel of Misfortune can help him refill. Finally, Rodrigo is having tough luck, playing fourth for quite some time now. He kept his first 7 with a Volcanic Island, Mana Confluence and Exotic Orchard for lands. Nihil's Spellbomb is good at interacting with Breach Lines, as well as being copied and dealing with more than one graveyard per turn. Vampiric Tutor can help him pivot his game plan, having Fierce Guardianship for interaction, and Rhystic Study to hopefully rival his opponent's Esper Sentinels. Before we get into the match, we would like to gladly announce a special Christmas giveaway, sponsored by our fellow Dragon Shield. If you want to win such cool prizes like these playmats, deck box or an assortment of sleeves, including a special pack of split-second sleeves, check out the description below for more details. Now ready for the match? Ball starts the game with a Sea of Clouds and casts his Esper Sentinel, passing the turn. Diogo plays an Island and casts a Mana Vault, triggering Sentinel and Ball draws. He then casts a Talesman of Progress and proceeds to cast his own Esper Sentinel, ending his turn. Elder plays an Ancient Tomb and casts a Recto Signet, triggering both Sentinels and unable to pay. Rodrigo draws, plays a Mana Confluence and casts a Lotus Petal, triggering both Sentinels and he can't pay. Ball and taps, draws, plays a Vault of Champions and casts a Talesman of Progress, triggering Diogo's Sentinel and he can't pay. He then attacks Elder for one and on his second main phase he casts a Sarah Ascendant, passing the turn. Diogo draws and takes one from his Mana Vault. He plays in a Darker Waste and then casts an Emery Lurker of the Lock. He enters play, milling himself 4 cards, and then he attacks Rodrigo for one and passes. Elder plays a Command Tower and then casts an Imperial Recruiter, entering play and recruiting a Dockside Exhaustionist to his hand. In his end step, Rodrigo casts his Vampiric Tutor, triggering both Sentinels and he doesn't pay. He searches for his own Dockside Exhaustionist and proceeds to his turn. He draws, plays a Volcanic Island and casts Dockside Exhaustionist, and no one is surprised. In response though, Diego casts a Dress Down, triggering both Sentinel and he can't pay. It enters play and he draws a card of his own, while Rodrigo calls for discrimination, asking who will now deal with Elder's Dockside. Bal draws and keeps playing Battlebone Lands, this time a Morphic Pool. He thinks for a bit and goes into combat, attacking Elder for 6 in the air, as he will have a lot of mana next turn. He then goes to clean up and discards 2 lands, suspiciously leaving 4 mana open. Yuga draws and loses 1 from the vault. He activates Emery, targeting his box Ember in the graveyard. He casts the Ember, triggering Sentinel and Bal draws, yet more lands. Duke then casts a Jewel Lotus and follows it with Urza. Wait, not his commander, Lord High Artificer. In response though, Bal casts a Mana Drain. Sentinel triggers and Yoga draws, but he can't fight over it, so now he plays Otawara, which he wanted to keep in hand after having both Urzas in play. He now casts his other Urza, cracking his Lotus and passing the turn. Elder plays Crystal Vein and casts his Dockside Exhaustionist. Everyone passes priority and he creates 7 treasures. If that weren't enough, he now puts a Wheel of Misfortune on the stack, and Player's Mansion voting higher than his life total. Both Sentinels trigger and he doesn't pay. Everyone shows their votes and all but Diogo discard and draw a new 7. Elder and Rodrigo lose 10 life and now Elder puts a reanimator on the stack, targeting Diogo's Urza. In response, Ball fires a Brainstorm. Sentinel triggers and he doesn't pay. He draws 3 and does show the third card drawn, a Mental Misstep, that he eventually casts after finishing the Brainstorm. However, Elder responds with a Red Elemental Blast on it, securing his reanimated Urza, entering play and creating a Construct. He then casts a Basalt Monolith, hoping to find Mesmeric Orb to build himself completely. He goes ahead and activates Urza using his treasures to tap for blue. 
but he exiles a Dragon Skull Summit, so he just passes. Rodrigo draws and puts a Gitaxan probe on the stack right away, directing Val and not paying for either Sentinel. He sees quite a scary hand, mentioning to the table Val has a mystical tutor that he can use to find a reanimation spell for Luras to get Isochron Scepter to imprint his dramatic reversal. Rodrigo draws, plays a luxury suite and casts a Talisman of Indulgence, to then cast a Dothy Voidwalker, quite in a timely fashion, as it stops almost everything his opponents want to do. Balan taps and casts his mystical tutor, wanting to ship the lands on top and hoping to have some use for his mana drains mana. Sentinel triggers and Yoga draws. He finds an Echo of Eons to the top. Mystical tutor is exiled to Dothi and Bal draws for the turn, gaining 4 colors mana from mana drain. He plays an exotic orchard and casts a Chromox, imprinting a black market connections. He then casts an opposition agent and only then he casts the Echo of Eons. Everyone appreciates it and he recoups the good cards he had in his graveyard while Echo is exiled to Dothi. Bal then considers attacks, quite afraid of Diogo, but eventually Elder has a lot of mana available in his next turn, so he takes the hit. We're back to Diogo, he draws and takes one from the vault. He plays an exotic orchard and casts a Senses Divining Top, triggering Sentinel and paying for it. He then casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Flutter Strand. He now activates the top, hoping to find Future Sight Effect on top, but nothing to be seen, so he passes. Elder draws, plays a Reflecting Pool and casts a Mana Vault, triggering both Sentinels and not paying. He then activates Urza again, rolling the wheel and revealing a Senses Divining Top as well, which is actually most of what he wanted to find, as he now casts Bola Citadel. It resolves, so activates the top to rearrange the top 3 cards, hoping to find some answers. He is dead on the bar through Ascendant, so he's going all in, activating Senses Divining Top to draw a card and casting it from the top of his library through the Bola Citadel, paying 1 life, hoping to eat some mana and the reservoir. He goes all the way to 1 life and stops there sadly proceeding to clean up and discarding two lands and a useless skimming symmetry to the Dothy Voidwalker. Rodrigo wishes he had a Dark Phaedon in his library, as he draws for the turn. He then casts a Mana Phase Brainstorm, both Sentinels trigger and he doesn't pay. He hopes to find something, and he did. He now plays an Ancient Tomb and casts a Bola Citadel of his own, and the table laughs, not only from the symmetry but that he lost 4 life to pay for it, so if he flies too close to the sun, Eller can just kill him with his own Citadel. In response though, Dio activates his top to know what's coming, and it resolves. Rodrigo now casts a Jewel Lotus and goes ahead cracking his Dothy Voidwalker to cast Echo of Viennes. In response to it, Diogo casts Alchemist Retrieval, with its cliff cost paid actually reduced by 1 from Urza and paying for Ball Sentinel Trigger. He bounces Rodrigo's Bola Citadel and everyone time twists yet once again, while Echo of Viennes is once again available to Ball through its flashback cost. Quite some scary cards they've drawn. Ball gets to his turn, plays his Kalintarn and cracks it. In response though, Diogo activates the top to rearrange the top 3. Val finds an underground sea and then casts his commander, Tarnos Solemn Survivor. He then proceeds to combat and sends several Ascendant towards Diogo, an opposition agent towards Rodrigo, not wanting to kill Elder since he can still have Rodrigo in check in case his life lowers too much, and he does need to untap his mana vault in order not to lose. Rodrigo jumps with Dockside and Val passes. Diogo draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a Misty Rainforest and cracks it right away, knowing about the agent, as he just wants to shuffle the top cards. Bal does get to see his silencing hand and finds a Tundra for himself. Diogo shuffles up and once again activates the top to look at the top 3. He now casts a Mox Opal, triggering Sentinel and paying for it, ending his turn. Elder untaps and he is forced to pay to untap his Mana Vault. He still activates the top in his upkeep to try to find something and he did. He casts a Praetor's Grasp, triggering both Sentinels and not paying. He targets Rodrigo, hoping to find his Aetherflux Reservoir. Note that the Opposition Agent's replacement effect only comes into play if players are searching their own libraries. As Elder is searching, he doesn't find the Reservoir, because it is sadly in Rodrigo's hand, as well as Demonic Consultation, so he is close to winning. Elder eventually gets a Tainted Pact. He now plays a Mountain from the top of his library and casts Rodrigo's Tainted Pact. However, his deck is not built around it, so he just prays he finds Reservoir before two basics. He starts exiling cards, and did it find a second swamp? He looks at the top card, activates the top once again with the floating mana, and then he eventually casts his Jewel Lotus, which he cracks to cast his commander, Mishra Timur of Mac Fawa. At least he is cast, so don't complain. Rodrigo draws his Brainstorm again. He does cast it, treating both Sentinels and not paying. This game is quite full of Deja Vu's, and those Sentinels are the MVPs. Rodrigo then casts his commander as well, Mishra Eminent One. He goes into combat, triggering Mishra to create a token that's a copy of Talisman of Indulgence, except its name is Mishra Warform and it's a 4 4 construct. He does not attack and proceeds to his second main phase, where he uses the Talisman to help cast a Wish Cloud Talisman, hoping to find Thassa's Oracle with his removal for the Oppo. Balan taps and asks Diogo if he can draw, as he is packing 3 silence effects. 
He plays a Marsh Flats and then casts a Sol Ring, tricking Sentinel and not paying. He then casts a Brainstorm and after ditching two cards he cracks the Marsh Flats to find a Tundra. He now casts an Arcane Signet and follows that with a Mox Ember. Dio keeps asking when he's flashbacking the Echo Vians, but Ball isn't sure since he'd rather have his blue interaction for Diogo, since he already has two combo pieces in play. He attacks Rodrigo for 6 in the air to put him in Citadel's range. In his second main phase he casts a Demonic Tutor and in response to that Diogo fires a Calamity's Wake, as he now knows Ball is not going to fire that Echo anytime soon. Sentinel triggers and he pays for it. Ball searches for a silence of his own, to help deal with any winning attempts from Diogo and passes. In the end step, Diogo activates the top and exclaims at what he found. He gets his turn, draws, takes one from the vault and plays an island. He goes ahead, casting his silence, triggering Ball Sentinel, but in response Rodrigo proposes an offer Diogo doesn't want but cannot refuse, triggering both Sentinels but unable to pay for them. Both of them draw and then Diogo casts a Grim Monolith. With 12 mana, he now casts the Mystone and Wickstone, both of them. The table talks about possible swaps to defend the opposition agent, but Diogo goes ahead saying he just wants to draw cards, so the rocks hit the field, and he does choose the mode to draw two cards. Diogo now goes ahead and casts his Abeyance, targeting Bal, and since Rodrigo does not have any swat, Bal responds with his silence, triggering Sentinel and paying for it. However, in response, Diogo casts a Nexus of Fate, hoping to go at it again next turn. But now, Rodrigo still has a say in the matter, with a Force of Will, pitching his Rhystic Study. Nexus is shuffled into Diogo's library, Diogo is silenced and so is Baal, and Diogo draws from the Abeyance. Diogo then activates the top to rearrange the top 3 and passes. Eldaran taps and once again is forced to pay 4 to untap his mana vault. Finding Mesmeric Orb still gives him the win here, so he activates the top in the upkeep, digging further. He draws and now fires his Jeska's Wheel targeting Baal with 7 in hand, about to have 8, as he doesn't pay for any Sentinel trigger. He exiles the top 3 and gains 8 red mana. He activates the top again, still digging further. He now casts the Reti's Scrap Savant, and upticks him right away discarding two dead cards and drawing two. He now plays a Gemstone Caverns from the top and he can't even cast his Goblin Engineer due to Oppo, so he activates the top again, but still no Reservoir in the horizon. With four red mana floating, he activates the top to draw a card, and fires a Wheel of Fortune, but this time Bob responds with his Swan Song, triggering Sentinel and paying for it. Elder still casts the Codex Shredder and passes. Rodrigo gets his turn, draws and casts Aether Flux Reservoir, triggering both Sentinels and not paying. He goes to combat, triggering Mishra and creates another construct copy of Reservoir, with which he attacks Baal for 4. In the second main phase he ponders on casting some spells to gain some life, but eventually passes. In the end step, Baal activates Tonos to mill himself for 2 and gets his turn. He draws, plays Diogo's Tundra and proceeds to combat, sending Sarah Ascendant towards Rodrigo to have him out of the equation, but he flashes in a Dress Down, triggering both Sentinels and he can't pay. That was his interaction all along for Oppo. Dress down resolves and Rodrigo draws a card. He is then able to block Sarah Ascendant with his commander, and on Baal's second main phase he casts the Fairy Time Reveler. Sentinel triggers and he doesn't pay. The table is expecting him to go for the win, but they can contest. He now casts Yagmoth's Will. He then follows it with a demonic tutor from his graveyard and searches for this placer kitten to his hand. He then down ticks the fairy targeting Rodrigo's dress down and draws a card. He now casts Displacer Kitten and proceeds to cast a Lotus Petal from the graveyard, triggering Displacer Kitten and bouncing the fairy, which enters play as a new object, able to activate again. So he now demonstrates this loop that allows him to draw the whole library, but one card, in case he missed something since Sentinel is a mandatory draw. He now casts a Mox Diamond, triggering Kitten to bounce Arcane Signet and discards a Godless Shrine to it, to help cast Thassa's Oracle. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone! The dueling Esper Sentinels played a key role in keeping Diogo and Baal stocked with interaction, having drawn Diogo's 19 cards and Baal 17. The all too frequent reels allowed everyone to stay in the game somewhat, but in the end Sarah Ascendant combined with Rodrigo and Elder's taxing of their own life totals meant that they couldn't quite go for the win. Diogo flooding out and drawing a few too many silences meant that all that Baal needed was one opportunity to walk away with the game. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Ajimo, Dragon House Cat, V, RJ, Hit Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Steak, Katerina, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wicked, Zinan, Nugan Smith, and CJ Wally, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!